first couple things that I can think of related to engagement to on a newsfeed is um, click through rate. So the likelihood of a user just clicking on a piece of content. Hi everyone, this is Jay from Interview Query. Uh, today I'm joined by Jeff, uh, who works at DoorDash. Jeff, uh, I'd love for you to do a quick uh, introduction uh, on kind of like how you got into data science. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I've been in data science for about three years. Uh, before data science, I was working in technology consulting. At the time, I was actually playing a lot of poker on the side. So I found it really interesting with spending my Friday nights playing poker. I uh, realized it wasn't really a good long-term uh, strategy since I was trying to like make enough money to like live off of it. But I really <laughs> like math and statistics behind it, behind it. So that's what drove me towards data science. And uh, yeah, I've been in data science for the last three years. Started off at a ed tech company called DataQuest, then moved on to the machine learning team at DoorDash. And uh, yeah, happy to happy to ha uh, happy to be here. Awesome, cool. Um, and then. I guess, is there anything you could talk about, about uh, like machine learning at DoorDash uh, in terms of uh, the stuff that you've worked on that's uh, been pretty cool or interesting? Yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, I was one of the first ML data science hires at DoorDash. So I worked on a little bit of everything on all sides of the business. Uh, I worked a little bit on our personalization recommendation algorithm, uh, helped work a bit on marketing segmentation and marketing attribution. And I've also done some work on our pay model. How do we optimally pay drivers? And then uh, recently I've been working a lot on uh, demand forecasting. Gotcha, cool. Yeah. Um, awesome, so I guess for the first question, I think it might be um, kind of similar. It's more machine learning based. Um, and so let's say you work as like a data scientist on the uh, LinkedIn um, engagement team, right? Um, and let's say that we, uh, have like a obviously we have like a news feed ranking algorithm right so that when you log in uh, you see like a general news feed of um, stuff that might be interested to you so uh, the first question is how would you actually measure the success of the news feed ranking algorithm okay taking some notes here yep definitely okay cool so I think before I start diving in uh, I just want to make sure I really have understood the problem. Uh, I'm going to be a data, I am a data scientist on LinkedIn's engagement team, and we're working on the newsfeed ranking algorithm. And then we want to measure the success of uh, a new newsfeed algorithm. And the first step will be to just kind of come up with some metrics that we think can evaluate how effective this newsfeed algorithm is. Uh, am I getting it right? Yep. Cool. Okay, cool. So you mind if I take a second? I'm just going to kind of brainstorm to myself, so then we can yeah. walk through the solutions. For sure. Okay, cool. So I think um, just kind of preliminary, I uh, first couple things that I can think of related to engagement to on a newsfeed is um, click through rate. So the likelihood of a user just clicking on a piece of content. Uh, however, I think a better uh, measure on like how engaged and how relevant the content could be for a user is if they actually share content, because that means that they're much more likely to, they like it enough to say, hey, I think this is valuable. I think that you should um, also look at this as well. And the third one I can think of is related to comments. So um, yeah, comments is a, a, a huge indicator of how engaged they are. And I think the next one is how many times they post as well. So number of posts. So I think, uh, yeah, so I would say those are the four different metric, uh, four different components that I might want to look at. Um, it's still a little bit vague right now. Would you want me to break this down into more of a defined metric or uh, do we want to keep uh, moving, moving forward? Yeah, so let's say that um, we uh, want to like uh, tweak the model, I guess, a little bit. Um, and so, um, I guess how do we uh, know, uh, and let's say that um, some of the metrics that you're tracking, like these four metrics, some of them are going up and then some of them are actually going down. Uh, mm -hmm. So how would you approach like thinking about which ones are more important uh, for uh, the team? Okay, so yeah, thinking out loud here, I'm thinking that there are two different ways I can approach it. So the, the, the first way I can approach it is actually from a business perspective. So 
what what metric has a, say like a strong correlation or a strong indicator of a positive impact for a business so in linkedin's case they pro likely make money through different advertisements shown uh, they likely make money through their recruiter platform and they likely make money from companies posting uh, jobs on their website so uh, i think one perspective we can actually go with is the business perspective uh, the second one we can go with was just uh, basically very focused on the user so we want to make this the best user experience possible so i think that uh, depending on what the business's priorities are that would indicate what the metric is so i think if we're going to go from a business perspective so if, if linkedin makes money on ads then ideally if if advertisers will make money through uh, impressions and click-through rates then if we're going to base this off business maybe ctr is something that we might want to optimize for in that case okay if, we're, if we want to optimize for the user experience uh, ideally users who love the content i think that let's sharing could be one however my guess uh it's, this is not validated by data uh, is that most people don't share that much content on LinkedIn, only like a select few people do share content. So there's a chance if we trained a model on that or improve the ranking algorithm there, we might just have a very sparse data set. Uh, I think another one could be uh, comments. Uh, I think that's just a much stronger indicator of how, it, like th that, that the comment is relevant to that user compared to say CTR, you can have like a very big, uh, I don't know, like very juicy headline to get somebody to click. So I think if we we're going to go with user experience, I might say think of, I might say comments would be one a likelihood of commenting on say a post or a, a link shared. If we're going to focus on user experience, so um, yeah, but I think what I would do here was I first talk to the product manager, talk to leadership, make sure we're aligned on hey, what is the goal? What goal are we trying to achieve with the business? Okay, um, so let's say that the PM uh, comes back to you and says that. Uh, one of their biggest goals or one of the things, pr biggest problems that they've seen is that people will be on LinkedIn um, when they're searching for a job, but after they, they're like done with a job, they like stop using LinkedIn. Uh, and so how do we then kind of like reapproach this uh, and look at uh, if there are any other metrics or things that we should take and consider from that? Got it. So, so basically people you would want to use LinkedIn a lot when they're looking for jobs. But then once they get a job, they just stop using it as much. Is that right? Yep. So they okay. have like a general longer term, um, let's say like engagement issue then, right? Uh, and so um, potentially like, can we think of like kind of new goals or like new metrics uh, or just new strategies um, in terms of like optimizing which metrics to basically uh, improve the, um, the longer uh, like retention curve? Got it, okay. So ideally here, if we were to improve long-term retention, so right now the problem is that users will drop off because, so it sounds like from a user perspective, LinkedIn really does a good job of solving that pain point of trying to help them find a job. So then I'm, so trying to think of this from the user, what other pain points might a user have uh, out once they do find a job? So I think that kind of brainstorming out loud here, I think that one, if I were an employee, once I found a job through LinkedIn, I would definitely want to continue improving my skills. So actually, so what comes to mind there can be like LinkedIn learning. Is there like a really strong like education platform for me to uh, improve my skills? Uh, another thing I can think of from the user perspective is if I was a hiring manager uh, that just got hired, I want to find great candidates uh, through LinkedIn, even if I'm not looking for a job, uh, that's going to be a huge one. So is there, is, is there a really high quality product that can help me find high quality candidates? Candidates. Cool. So um, yeah, what else can I think of? I think that in addition to that, um, yeah, I think other things I can think of, depending on the role, uh, if you're like an account manager, you're definitely gonna be using LinkedIn a lot to say build out sales leads. So uh, like LinkedIn sales navigator, that's another one I can think of and then uh, I've noticed recently that LinkedIn has been really big on just like content production. So you can, people can write articles, they can sh share links or uh, write, write articles to like build their brand uh, just within their career. So building uh, brand building. 
Okay, cool. Okay, so kind of, okay, th these are like a good amount of, there's like kind of a wide variety of things of, that I've kind of mapped out here. So now we want to translate these into some, say, metrics that, that we want, some metrics that can measure this side of the product that would make long term improve retention. Um, okay, so. And let's say that we want to like tie it back to uh, newsfeed as well, right? So um, even if we have these products, we want to put them into the newsfeed um, to improve like longer form uh, retention, right, over time. So, um, and say we're going back to like the core problem of measuring success of like the ranking specifically. Um, mm -hmm. can you think of like potentially more metrics now, like um, that would then be more focused on like the longer term because I think a lot of the like CTR, right, optimizes for ads, mm -hmm. but it's um, very much so like once you click through it, then like who knows if it was like clickbait and then you just go off LinkedIn, mm -hmm. right? Um, same with like, uh, you know, comments and then a uh, number of posts, right? Got it. So um, can we like, I guess, think more on that form of uh, like, kind of like specifically recommendation engine for the newsfeed and then also metrics that will then indicate that a user might come back in like 30, 60 or like 90 days. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, that definitely makes sense. So yeah, a lot of the metrics were very uh, short term focused. So how can we actually optimize for, uh, like, say, just more long term engagement with uh, users. So uh, if like, say, we have a very high quality, like, say, LinkedIn learning product, it's very likely that a user like if I was learning something new, I would probably want to log in at least a couple times per week, or maybe like, yeah, like weekly on a certain day. So uh, a metric that might come to mind would be say uh, like like weekly sessions or like monthly active monthly active sessions okay. from a user perspective um, if we want to go even more high level monthly active users and then weekly active users and then um, or we can do like say a monthly yeah monthly retention so th does the user who logs in for one month come back the next month yep um, yeah, so I would say those would be the ones that come to mind. All right, cool. Uh, and then uh, I guess in terms of, um, could you think of like uh, potentially more around, um, let's say, uh, like let's say we want like a graph to basically um, showcase uh, like retention and engagement um, or like a dashboard effectively. Um, so could you think about like a way that we could, what kind of like graph we could have that would then uh, showcase um, how news feed ranking then relates to um, like engagement and like we could see actually like a number going up or down. So a graph that would show the news feed ranking in relation to engagement. Yeah. So basically like a PM wants to be able to look at like a graph like every single day or like a dashboard um, mm -hmm. and basically be able to then understand if like we're helping like the engagement uh, number um, basically uh, increase or like decrease or if people are engaging more with uh, with the newsfeed or not. Um, can you think of like maybe uh, like a couple metrics or like a graph that we could present uh, essentially? Got it. Okay. So like how can like a graph that might be able to tie how what we're doing to the newsfeed to a um, to long term engagement, so yeah, the, I think the first thing that would come to mind would be like say a cohort based retention graph. Okay. So we have individual cohorts on each week, and then we would just show each subsequent week uh, how many people were retained for the previous week, or we can it depend it'll depend on how we want to define the time period. It can be like a weekly based cohort retention or a monthly based cohort retention. And then we can maybe for each cohort track exactly which newsfeed algorithm that we wanted to show them. And then maybe show the different retention curves across these different uh, variants of the newsfeed algorithm. Gotcha. Cool. So I think you did a pretty good job. Um, and I think uh, for the first part like doing the short-term metrics are definitely necessary um i think i was like kind of pushing you more towards uh some of the more engagement 
type metrics on LinkedIn, um, specifically around, uh, this one is like a combination of recommendation engine metrics plus like engagement metrics. Um, and so you got it mostly with the uh, kind of like cohort retention uh, and then thinking of like kind of like new products that should be um, kind of like integrated. I think I also might have like phrased that kind of strangely in terms of like longer form retention stuff. Um, I think a couple of like recommendation engine metrics that are pretty useful to like keep in mind are like um, looking at uh, a lot of these metrics cohorted by like ranking on the newsfeed. So if you have like, if you imagine like a recommendation engine has to sort through like, you know, like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of pieces of content and then place mm -hmm. them all in order. Uh, if we look mm -hmm. at these metrics by like their um, specific like ranking. So if we look at like one, what's placed in like slot one, the CTR for slot one, what's the CTR for slot two, CTR for slot three, four, and then compare that across like different ranking algorithms, then that helps us like understand um, if people are like engaging uh, within like the most recent stuff, right? Um, also mm -hmm. the other thing is like how many, um, you know, like pieces of items do they actually see, right? So if you only like, you know, you load the page and then only like one or two things show up and then you exit, obviously that means like the newsfeed ranking algorithm sucked, right? Because otherwise you just keep on scrolling. Uh, so just mm -hmm. like getting like the, a couple of these like, um, kind of like uh, algorithms are like, uh, or like metrics are like mean precision. So getting like the number of times that they like uh, a user like saw before they exited. So they're just like the average number of like piece of content they consumed or like viewed. Uh, so stuff mm -hmm. like that um, is like helpful. And then like the number of uh, like thing, like pieces of content that they interacted with out of the ones that they actually saw. Um, so I think in terms of like the general engagement metrics, you got uh, most of those, but I think next time it'd be good to like tie them into the, um, like the recommendation algorithm, uh, specifically like, uh, like kind of uh, content in terms of um, how it like surfaces uh, stuff, because uh, that way then you can compare like the recommendation engines against each other as well um, in terms of measurement. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I was thinking of it more from the business perspective, but uh, yeah, getting like kind of deeper into specifically how the recommendation engine was specifically ranking different pieces of content and then tying that into say like, Hey, how many pieces of content did the user see against like, how, or how many pieces of content did the user have to scroll through until they clicked through to whatever content? Uh, yeah. That definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And uh yeah, that's true. I think a lot of these are also pretty open ended. Um, so it's like uh, a lot of the times depends on like how the interview wants to take it too. because um, in any in one of those moments, they could just ask you about, uh, you know, improving the longevity of success of like different products outside of just um, newsfeed too, as well. Um,